Yes. So welcome everyone to this uh, third session of the online sharing sessions we're doing as part of the Right to the Streets project. Um, just as a bit of an introduction, um, the Right to the Streets project was funded by the Home Office as part of their separate street funds uh, to reduce violence against women and girls and create inclusive, active streets and public spaces for everyone in Trafford. Uh, as I said, this is the third of the three of the six free online sharing session with Baton, and each one has spotlighted on a partner, a project partner, to share their contribution. So today we'll be talking to Vic from Mike Media, who will share more about um, using podcasts to um, platform voices to raise awareness about violence against women and girls. So I'll pass over to you. Thanks so much, Priska. So yes, thanks Priska and thanks to Open Data Manchester for hosting these really, really useful online sharing sessions. So for the next 10 minutes or so, or so I'll be sharing with you how Mike Media have worked with Greater Sport, GM Moving, ODM and lots of other wonderful partners to create two podcast series for the Right to the Streets project. So what I'll be covering is a bit of like a breakdown of how we made series one of the right to the streets podcast a little bit about what's coming up in series two that's currently in pre-production slash production and also how you can get involved in the podcast as well get your voice on the podcast and that's all coming up in a bit so just a little bit about who I am and who Mike Media are we are a podcast production and training agency and we're set up as a social enterprise. So we're a profit for purpose podcast production company. That is a lot of P's. Um, and we get out of bed every morning just simply to help people to amplify their stories and voices through top quality audio, especially if those voices are often, often underheard or unheard as well. God, I've been obsessed with audio since I was a little girl, like dead, dead tiny. And I'm, it's such a joy now to do this for a living and share that joy with other people as well. So we started in 2019. We primarily work with other Good Eggs, so other social impact organisations who are making a difference to the world with their work. So we've worked with the likes of Oxfam, Co-op, Plan UK, the National Football Museum, Manchester City Council, lots and lots of good eggs. And that took us to working with Greater Sports, um, who commissioned us last year, 2022, hot off the heels of making the second series of their GM Moving podcast. And so they contacted us and, and um, asked us if we'd like to work on this brand new project. And so we were commissioned as part of the Right to the Streets project to create two accompanying podcast series. And those two series or seasons, if you're listening in the States, had two different clear objectives. The first series was to set the scene, to set the context of Right to the Streets. So what do we mean by safer streets? What do we mean by safer streets for women and girls? What are the key issues surrounding making our streets and where we live more safe, welcoming, and to give everyone a sense of belonging in their local community? And importantly, because we didn't want to feel like um, we're the only ones who've got this agenda, we're the only ones that have this voice, we wanted to showcase and celebrate the people on the ground who are already making those changes and contributing to this agenda in their community and more specifically North Trafford, so around the Gorse Hill and Stratford area, which is a lovely link because I am a former Gorse Hillian, uh, Stratfordian. Yeah, so I lived in the area for a long time. And so it's a project as well that was close to my heart and um, because I'd experienced some of the issues and things that had been brought up within the series so yeah the first series all about setting the context and a, a conversation starter as well and the second series which is in production now so the second series of the right to the streets edition of the GM moving podcast which I'll go on to in a second actually why it's got that big long title um is 
all about celebrating and showcasing the wonderful projects that make have made up the year-long project of Right to the Streets. So what inf interventions have we delivered um, to help deliver the overall objectives? And this series is not, there's a, there's a fine line between when we create a series that celebrates projects and outcomes in our work, there's a fine line between look how good we are, aren't we amazing, to creating something that's useful. And that's what we want to do with series two, create something that's useful so other organisations, local authorities, partners, systems, agencies, in GM and wider can listen to it and take inspiration from it. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fine line there because to be completely honest with you, no one's bothered about listening to a podcast that's all about listen how good we are in the projects that we've done. To be blunt. Um, so early on in the production of the GM moving, uh, the Right to the Street podcast series, it was going to be a separate entity. It was going to be, so GM moving, great sport, have got their own podcast and it was going to be a completely different series, Right to the Street podcast. Um but because of the way that we've worked within this project and the core partners are always having conversations, we're always, ha always having updates with each other, which I think is vital as well in podcast productions that you're not creating something that the client doesn't want, is that we figured, and actually great sports start this conversation, why don't we make it part of the GM Moving podcast? So we've already got an audience with the GM Moving podcast. This can be just another edition of that podcast. So it sits on the same feed. And the pluses for that is that, again, it's that captive audience that we've already got. We're not starting from scratch. And so it's worked out beautifully, really, because if you look at this, the whole GM podcast as a whole, there are different editions of it, which is great for, for variety. But what stays the same throughout the GM Moving podcast is that it's a podcast for other delivery partners as an inspiration piece. So let's have a look at what goes in, what did go into series one of the Right to the Streets podcast series. <laughs> this is how it was delivered. So there's always four stages to creating a podcast. There's the pre-production with the planning, the production, which is the doing it, the recording bit, the sexy bit, the one that everyone like wants to jump to because they have to get to play with the microphones. And there's the post-production, which is editing it. I'm editing it into something um, that sounds coherent makes sense and it hits the objectives that you wanted to get out of the podcast in the first place and then there's the releasing it and marketing it which and I always say I deliver podcast workshops op, shops on how to podcast and I always say the podcast marketing is the bit that takes most podcasters by surprise <laughs> so lots of different stages and it always takes longer than you think as well um with any project so that's one of my, you know, tips for podcasts is podcast production is if you're thinking, if you're an organization thinking of starting a podcast, the timeline that you have in your head, double it. Literally double it. Um, because as if, if fellow project managers and project leads are listening to this, the things that the things that hold podcasts up or projects up is people. So you've got to allow people time and faff time, but you've also got to be flexible as well. Another tip is that the, the more content that you record, the longer all the process is. The more complicated or the more complicated, the more involved, the more um, bits to your podcast, the longer the pre-production will be, the longer the production will be, and way longer the post-production will be. Um, there's often a thing that uh, if I've got more content, I've got more to play with. Well, it's, the, it's the opposite because it's more difficult to whittle it down. Unless you're after, you know, a three and a half hour Joe Rogan style deep dive into something, which we're probably not after. Um, keep it, keep it simple. And also I go back to flexibility. There'll be times, and we know as project managers or project coordinators or anyone that's delivered a project, that things can change last minute. So, for example, one of the conversations we had um, and we tried for ages because they were so busy, two decision makers. Um, we've got Dame Sarah Story, who's the, um, the, the lead for active travel at GMCA and, and Vernon Everett, um, one of the leads at uh, Transport for Greater Manchester. And they're so, so busy. So we finally got a date in the diary. 
that aligned with our host, Eve Holt, whose diary is very, very busy as well. But then a train strike happened, which meant Vernon couldn't get out of London. And so we had to have a hybrid recording session, which involved Vernon dialing in. Dialing in. That was very old fashioned of me to say, but dialing in um, online and uh, Sarah, uh, Dame Sarah Story at the offices in Manchester. Um, and so having a producer physically and me, but yeah, so it works and it sounded okay. We've got to be flexible as well. So the pre-production, like I say, um, I think at the end of the first series and the book, the, the first series included 70 voices across eight episodes. But we approached many more. And to get the very best out of people, um, we think and we believe that it's really good to build a relationship with people. So most of those people were spoken spoken to, we spoke to before as well, for them to get used to us, to get used to what the learn more about what the podcast was about and for us to do a little bit of research beforehand. So good pre-production will help the rest of your podcast run smoothly. Um, but it does take time. We've got to think of diaries and booking people in as well. And so then we got into the production. So we've pl- in the pre-production, we've planned the shoots, we've planned the locations, we've got permissions, we've done risk assessments, um, we've geared every all the guests up that we're gonna um we're gonna speak to, they know what we're gonna talk about. Our hosts and producers know what the essence of every episode is, what we're trying to get out of it. Um, so each 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 episode in series one had at least two recording shoots that was involved in it we had an in-person one uh an in-person recording and maybe an online recording as well um and this was done at the start of the year so it was manchester winter um we battled with snow rain locations that we'd not been to before there was a cricket ground with building work going on busy football matches we went to um we camped outside I mean not physically camped we camped outside a fat boy slim gig at Victoria Warehouse to record gig goers going into the gig and so a big part of this is also we're talking about safer streets but a big part of that is safety as well so that was that was built into every the planning of every episode and, and I must give a shout out to our producers Daniel Porter and Sarah Leach um, who accompanied Eve on a lot of these adventures as well and so we recorded a lot of good stuff and we had we recorded a variety of stuff so that it wasn't just two people sat in a room speaking. It'd be daft of us in a project about safer streets and right to the streets. It'd be daft of us not to go and record streets. <laughs> There'd be an opportunity that'd be missed there. I'm just going to play a little bit of an episode that just um, exemplifies the richness of the series. So that prevention work, having those conversations with young boys and men, but keeping boys and men safe is is vital in our fight to get this right. So on that rallying call to action, let's leave Joe and Sasha for a few minutes. Come with me and our producer Danielle to speak to a bunch of excitable gig goers who are experiencing the nighttime economy in Trafford firsthand. So we're just on the road right outside Victoria Warehouse. There's lots of taxis and pulling up. We've got lots of party goers who are all going to see the fat boy I'm very jealous. So is Danielle. (laughs) Gutted. (laughs) Gutted. Gutted. And you can hear a few uh, tickets out in the background, buying and selling the last few tickets. And just been great. It's you know great to, to talk to people as they arrive about their experiences on our streets, what makes them feel safe, what doesn't, um, and what are the things we can improve. <laughs> I always think about how to be safe. It's always something that I think about. Even I live in a really nice village. I'm going to go back there tonight, and then I will still think. How am I getting home? Am I going to be okay? And which way am I walking? Is it lit? So the post-production then, we'd recorded all this stuff, 70 voices. I can't even tell you how many hours we've recorded. It was lots. So the post-production is the editing. Edit it down to eight episodes. Um, And a big shout out to our series editor, Charles Commons, and also uh, Kate Marden, who works on the transcriptions and marketing materials. Um, that you will have seen 
on the GM moving and great sport uh, social media accounts. The post-production phase is a another one that we often don't give enough time to or think that it takes time. <laughs> um, because if we think that we had at least two recording locations for every episode and that was like an hour each, but we only wanted every episode to be an hour and there was intros and outros to go in there as well. There were some harsh decisions to be made in the editing um, and it goes through a process. But in the meantime, it's transcribed as well. So every episode has got a um, a word document that's a transcribed transcription of the full episode for, for accessibility mainly. And also transcripts can contribute towards SEO as well if they're published on websites. So series one, eight episodes, 70 people. Um, sp spoke to key decision dis decision decision makers from like the Great Manchester's deputy mayor Kate Green, key influencers like Nazir Afsal, policy makers, people from Traffic Council, Councillor Joe Harding, Sasha Lord influencers, but most importantly, lots of local people, lots of local voices, lots of local organisations from the St John Centre to Manchester United Foundation to Mile Shy Running Club. We wanted to make sure that it was representative of the community that we were speaking about. And then what comes after all that is marketing, is making sure that or putting the steps in place for the person that you want to listen to your podcast, actually tuning in, not that anyone tunes in anymore, but tunes in to listen to your podcast. So from the outset, outside, it's important to have an, an audience in mind. Um, your podcast isn't for everyone, uh, nor, nor can it appeal to a wide as audience as possible. Otherwise, you end up speaking to no one. So we had a good idea of who our audience was at the start of making the podcast. So the marketing then is all about putting it in front of the people that we want to listen to it. So that's sharing our newsletters, social media, social media, but with messaging that resonates to your target audience. Um, and we used various things, but one of the main things that we use to market the podcast is um, an audiogram, which is one of these on the screen right now. What would you like to say happen next? Change like me being confident to walk down the streets like alone like without anybody saying anything to me. It's so like in the park when I'm walking down, it's like say something or like scream or, you know, whistle or something. Like it's just not okay. So I want that to change. I want something to happen and people be educated. Yeah, I think educating people is really important because like if they know that they're doing something wrong, then, then they'll maybe stop doing it. People really normalise doing these things, but they shouldn't be normalised because it's not right to say these things to people. That's an audiogram and that's a, a clip of the episode, whether that's um, a clip where someone says something funny, contentious, memorable, or, or, or what links them all is that the audience will go, I would like to listen to more of that. Um, and it's a great visual representation of audio that you can put on social media. And they're very easy to make. There's an online program called Headliner that you can make those on and various other ones as well. But important to, to recognise that it's, Podcast marketing isn't just, I've got a new episode out, listen to it now because it absolutely speaks to no one and gives no one a reason to, to listen to your podcast. Um, but with the help of Great Sport, uh, it's marketing department, uh, shout out to Andrew um, and, and, and the girls there, we had a bit of a rhythm to, to market each episode. And what we were in the production as well, what we were really conscious of is, is to make things evergreen to, an, to a certain extent so that, we could tweet this, keep tweeting about the series. Say it was really it released in May. We could tweet about it in October, and there wouldn't be much in it to date it, which is important to uh, maximize maximize the shelf life of your podcast. So I promise at the start as well, um, this is your chance to star in an episode, of the Right to the Streets podcast. So we are currently in pre-production of series two. And 
we've got this we've set this nifty little thing up it's a voicemail service where we are very keen to hear from people like you from across greater manchester or if you live in trafford that's a bonus maybe if there's anyone here today who works in departments of trafford council who has team members this is a qr code that you can scan right away or take a picture of the screen and you'll be directed to our voicemail service i just think it makes us sound like a Saturday morning kids TV show that we've got a voicemail service and it's brilliant. And that's what, I, that's what I feel like I sound like at the minute, a kids TV presenter, leave us a voicemail. We'll get right back to you. Um, but there's a prompt and it's all about how you feel your community makes you feel welcome, makes you feel safe. And you can record up to 90 seconds. And what I'm hoping to do is use, do a selection and put a selection on one of the episodes coming up in autumn as well. You can don't have to get say your full name. You can sketch out what you're going to say in a bit of paper before, um, but your name and where you're from and um, what gives you, what creates that sense of community where you live or doesn't as well. But I'd like to hear some, I'd like to hear some negatives, please. I mean, I'm not all about the negatives, but some counterbalance would be good. Or what could be improved, shall we say? So that is your chance to get involved on the uh, Rights to the Streets edition of the GM Moving Podcast. So series two, like I say, is all about what we've done, the interventions we've made, the projects we've delivered, and the amazing people that we've had involved in the Rights to the Streets uh, project. And so, yes, I am I'm involved in an episode. It's going to be a podcast about podcasting, which is the most meta thing I've done in a while. But Open Data Manchester, I've got an episode as well about how data has shaped and influenced um, the project and legacy as well of the project of the whole Right to the Street project. Each one of those episodes is going to contain some really useful tidbits, advice um, and inspiration if you want to start making an impact or a difference or... Um, doing any sort of this work in in your community locality or region as well so i bet you're thinking oh how do i listen to this podcast well you can either if you are a podcast aficionado and you have a platform that you listen to podcasts on anyway whether that is spotify apple podcast google podcast maybe on amazon um just search gm moving podcast and we are the right to the streets edition you can also ask your smart speaker. Now, I'm not going to mention which one because it'll send everyone's off on one, but you can just ask them very nicely to play the GM Moving podcast. Um, it's on the GM Moving website, just gmmoving.co.uk, one of them, and search podcast. And then also I've done a little, another QR code that you can scan with your phone. And most of all, it's free. Uh, so, yes, thank you for listening. Hope. I've we've demystified a few things to creating a podcast um, and you are more than welcome to gain contact with anything that I've spoken about today thank you so much for that brilliant presentation like I learned so much you gave quite a lot of tips as well which is really helpful and uh, yes we Open Data Manchester have been involved in one of the podcast uh, episodes that's coming up <laughs> admittedly we were in the sexy bit of it so I don't know how the rest will be (laughs) for you but it was really fun oh amazing Um, I will open it up for some questions I have some questions that I'd Mm -hmm. like to ask you and uh you just mentioned things from other projects that have impacted how you approach this one but can you tell us a little bit more about how this project might have impacted some work other work that you've done or things that you have coming up yeah I mean I always say that as podcast experts, because we this is what we do for a living, this is how this is what we wake up every morning to do. As podcast production and training experts, our the projects we work on can be wildly different. So we've just launched a podcast with Oxfam and Save the Children about advocating for people, the protection of people in conflict and crisis. Um, we're finishing this project of about safer streets for women and girls. So we, you very quickly have to become an expert on a wide range of different subjects. Um, and so I'm always of the belief that at, at Mike, we're always continuing to learn, learn more about what people in place is, what makes people tick, um, what brings people joy. We're learning about local networks, the difference people are making uh, at both local, regional and national level. And so this project has continued to help us learn at Mike um, and the stuff that we have learned, the people that we've spoke to and the way that we've approached this project will no way, no way not impact the future that work that we do here. Thank you. 
just want to check if there's any other questions from the group yeah i guess um what what have been some of the highlights um of your work so far in the, the right to the streets project yeah one from the right, right to the streets and then general oh in general oh god uh what i love um and this is in general but also the right to the streets is the action of putting a microphone in front of someone's face and allowing them to tell their story is so powerful um especially if they've never done it before so the podcast has been heard across the uk um it's been heard in the usa it's been heard in canada uh India, Brazil, Germany, Spain, Holland, for that person in Old Trafford to have their experiences, their thoughts, their opinions amplified across the world, that to me is probably the most memorable and most rewarding thing, both in this project and and for everything that we do at Mike Media. What's been lovely as well through this project is bringing people together that I've never met before. Um, so facilitating that um, those those meetings of minds so for example Grace from uh, Collaborative Women um, a wonderful organisation based in Trafford that supports women that are going through stuff whether that's through housing and skills and, and qualifications um, she met Ruth Hannon who's the founder of Gorgeous Gorse Hill Community Gardening Project and they'd never met before and we brought them together for an episode and they just it was so I was stood behind them with a microphone and they were walking down the street just having a, a good old natter and a conversation and sparking interests and similarities in the way that they're working and I don't know what that's become of that but we facilitated that through this project that conversation also you know Councillor Joe Harding who was then the exec member for culture um in Old, uh, in Trafford um she was in conversation with Sacha Lord um the nighttime economy advisor for the GMCA and they'd never met before um so she could bring her personal experiences of being both um a resident of Trafford the councillor at Trafford and a mum of someone that goes out in the nighttime economy direct to the person who's who may have an influence in that so it's connections as well it's the things that we we it's the things we we haven't recorded um that's makes this project so beautiful <laughs> thank you i have one last question which you've kind of answered throughout yeah but i just want to put it back out just to see if anything else has come to mind and it's if there's any other advice you would give to the people or other organizations that want to try out using podcasts to share their community stories so i think it starts even before you buy a microphone um and there's five questions to ask yourself what is the purpose of my podcast so like why does it exist who is it for remember it's not for everyone what could make the most impact for my organization three questions and then lastly you don't have to look far for content as social impact organisations, projects, people, initiatives, we're, we're probably sat on the content for your new podcast, whether that's in your archive, your case studies, the voices of your beneficiaries, the people in your community. Um, that's your future content. But you've got to think, what content will make the most impact and who is it for? And why the hell am I doing it in the first place? Thank you. <laughs> I mean, everyone was muted, but I felt like the silence was uh, was intentional. Yeah, it's like the, the it epic in. finale of that. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to check if anyone has any questions or I'll just move to the last few things to let you know what's next. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again. Where did the share screen bit go? Bottom. <laughs> uh, we'll edit this bit out 
we we shall <laughs> oh it's actually disappeared oh never mind never mind it, it was me <laughs> that was totally me <laughs> um so i just want to share what's coming up next on our right to the streets event right where you can find more information about the next events happening in trafford um and also we have an instagram page which is right to the streets with an underscore at the end and the hash hashtag as well which is right to the streets and we'll be having another sharing session next week and this will be with uh, greater manchester moving and we'll have a few people come up and talk about the work that they've done. So we'll have Imogen Halls from uh, Greater Manchester Moving, but we'll also have Verity Garner, who's been the community connector for the Right to the Streets project, and also Ella from Our Goal, who's a football coach that has been um, putting up some events uh, for the community as part of the project. So that will be happening next week on a Friday, same time as today. So 12.30, so 1.30. That's all I wanted to share. So I wanted to thank everyone for Vic, the amazing presentation, for answering our questions, for posing questions and for being really engaged. Thank you for inviting me. I've loved it. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming and thanks for watching. Yeah, yeah thanks, Vic. No problem. Awesome. The recording. Mm. Nice one.